Hello, everyone. It's Tim Davis coming to you guys with a market consolidation review. That's what I'm going to call this because the market has been doing a lot of consolidation. If you um, step back, look at the bigger picture, I'm taking a look at these weekly charts, you'll see a lot of consolidation has been happening within our markets over the course, probably over the course of the past six months to a year. You know, let me point out what I'm what I'm talking about. And eventually, this pattern will give way either to the upside or the downside. So let's take a look at the broader market and the bigger picture um, and related to the past um, and taking a look at what happened in 2020. All right, so here's a weekly chart, five-year weekly chart of the S&P futures. want to point out Two moving averages that you see here on my screen are the the blue blue line, which is my 50-day rate line, which is my 200-day moving average. Down below, I have um, indicators of the uh, RSI, which is on the bottom. Also, caskets in the middle, and percentage just above that. Then my TTM squeeze right above that, which is the momentum indicator, to give us some um some sort of sense of of direction of the overall market. Now, here you'll see that back in, at around the beginning of uh, 2020, 2022, or towards the end of uh, 2021, super price action um, rallied off of the lows of 2020, all the way back up here to a high of 4808 on the S&P minis. Since then, the market um, started to trickle downward from beginning of 2022 until about the um, middle of 2022, right around June. And then the market tried to start, it started to bounce. Where at? Why did this 200 day moving average, as you can see here? So, right at the 200 day moving average, the market started to bounce. So, it's the market pretty much doing everything in its power to avoid this type of situation. So right around the middle of 2022, the market started to bounce. However, no real significant bounce because it only rallied back up to its 50-day moving average each time. 50-day moving average, as we see here. So we've been in this tight range between the 50 day and the 200 day on the weekly charts dating back all the way back to the middle of 2022. We've been in this tight trading range, folks. Anybody else notice that? Very, very tight trading range. So markets are not giving us a whole bunch of information with this tight trading range. One thing it does signify is that for the past several months or the past you know year or so, the market has been in this indecision area. Will we break out? Will we break down? Will we break out and continue and I'm starting a new bull market or will we break out and continue the spare market? That is to be determined. Um, right now, there's a lot of volatility within our market until we break out of this trading range, folks. Um, it could be difficult for traders, especially difficult, well, not difficult, too difficult for traders, but for difficult for long-term buy and hold type of um, investors because the market's not giving any clear picture as to where the market wants to go until we break out of this pattern. So again, this is the um, weekly chart and you'll see that we've pretty much been in this range bound situation for quite some time. Now, eventually, I think we're going to give way um, one way or the other. If it's still tightening, has no, um, they have no inclination of, 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 of slowing down until they believe um, they reach their 2% interest rate goal. So with the Fed continuing to hike rates, and has no intentions of um, 
of, of, of lowering rates. Uh, only thing they're talking about is a possible pause in the future, but no talk of actually um, reducing rates or uh, dropping rates versus um, continuing to increase rates. So that's what we look like. We're in this very, very tight trading range. We've been in this tight trading range for quite a while. Now, and we're still in a bear market, believe it or not. We're still in a bear market. This was our high, 4808. And right now, price action is right around 37.26, or around there. Oh, I'm sorry, around 40, 40.85, right about Right about now, what about 4085? Here's our low of 2020. We're still well off that low. However, what I want to point out is that one thing that the market did not do in 2020 is that we did not see on this weekly chart, we did not see the 50 per moving average drop below the 200 day. So that was um that was a sign that the market would probably find a way to bounce off of this low. Let's start to go high, which is what it did. Now, we did notice that the 50 day moving average did ever get so close. So there's a tight range in between the 50 and the 200 day back when price action started to bounce off that low in 2020. Then eventually, price action dropped, dropped right back above that 50 day moving average and continued its climb higher. Until we felt price action fell back below the 50 day moving average right around the beginning of 2022. Now the question is, what does the market do next? Do we keep this space between the 50 day and the 200 day or do all of a sudden on this weekly chart, does this 50 day eventually break down below that 200 day on this weekly chart? That is to be determined, and if that happens, folks, we are going to really start to see this bear market um, step it up, step it up a bunch. So that's what I'll be watching over the next couple of months is to see if we get a crossover of the 50-day moving average below the 200-day on a weekly chart. Keep that amount on the weekly chart. If that happens, we can really start to see um, markets start to give way to the downside. Now, so right now, we're still in this consolidation pattern. We are right back at the top of the 50-day moving average again on the weekly chart. And every time we have gotten there, you guys see what normally transpired. We found a way to pull back to this 200-day. Now we're right back just above this 50-day now. Is that 50-day is going to act as an area of support or do we drop below it? The momentum indicators are signaling weakness starting to come into the market as indicated here in the TTM squeeze, as indicated here in the winners percentage, starting to oscillate, starting to pull lower, as indicated here in the full stochastics, oscillate starting to pull lower. And RSI is just hovering right around at 60 level on the 200 day. I'm sorry, on the um, oscillators and RSI just hovering right around the overbought territory. So next week's gonna be interesting to see what happens. What happens with what Marcus is showing us right now. If I was to draw this out, you'll see these two weeks, the past two weeks, these candles are very, very in, uh, indecisive. Not really giving you much information. Do we continue to hold this support level and bounce off of this 250 day moving average and go higher? Or do we start to trend lower. Um, these indecision candles looks like a possible topping pattern, like we're possibly at the top of a of a um, rally or, or a move higher. We've been bouncing from this level since December. And we've been going higher. It's like we are at the top of a upward movement on the weekly chart, which means we could start to see prices trend lower. We have to see what happens over the next over the coming weeks or so. Now, while we're on this weekly chart, we're going to take a look at Dow Jones as well. 
And this one even looks more dire because you look like you got several indecision dojis right at the top over the past several weeks. You got a couple dojis that have, that have formed, which is the sign of indecision after a uptrend and consolidation pattern. And we got some indecision here. So what happens? Do we break out above this trend line or do we break back down below the 50 day moving average on this weekly chart? If you look at the oscillators, look at the TTM squeeze, it shows that mo momentum is starting to, upper momentum is starting to lose its flavor. Look at the wins percentage. The oscillators have been trending downward. And this, again, this is a Dow Jones, E-minis. Look at the full stochastics, oscillators are trending downward. And for the most part, RSI is just hovering right around the 55 level. So the momentum to the upside is, is getting weaker. So this consolidation pattern could be about to break. We have to see that is what's about to happen. Let's take a look at the NASDAQ futures. And if we draw this out, same type of scenario as as um as the Dow Jones and the S and P futures chart looks. Again, we have this fifty day moving average line is getting very is getting closer and closer, tighter and tighter, to um closer and closer to that two hundred day, which means that the space in between the two hundred day and the fifty day is getting tighter and tighter. So, does do the bull step in? and find a way to rally this market and move this 50-day back up? Or did the bear step in and find a way to close the gap between the 50-day and the 200-day and eventually take it down below the 200-day moving average? That should be determined, but right now, that, that is what this consolidation pattern is showing us, is that the market is barely moving. That's why you see all this volatility. You know, one week we're up, one week we're down. Everything is tight. We're in this very, very tight trading range, which is a, a long-term buy and holders nightmare because they're not really sure which way this market is going to, which this market is going to do. But as of right now, we're in this tight trading range, and this, there's going to be a decision eventually. Either the market's going to decide to roll over, break out of this range, or go higher. But right now, we're in this consolidation pattern. So that's something we need to really pay close attention to over, this, over the coming weeks. Which way do we go? Do we break down below these levels or do we break out to the upside? So there's clear support levels to pay attention to and clear levels of resistance to pay attention to. As you can see on this NASDAQ, here is this strong level of resistance that we've been bouncing off of. Should we start to break that break down below this 50-day moving average? We wanted to start paying attention to the 200 day and then ultimately this level of resistance down here because we have tested this level of resistance down here several times. It shows me that eventually something's going to give. Something's going to give. We're in a tight trading range. Something's going to give. Either these support levels are going to be breaking or the levels of resistance are going to be broken. So we got to pay close attention to that over the next couple of weeks or so. And if we look at the Russell, same scenario. These moving averages are getting tighter and tighter. And if we look, let me get rid of these trend lines. So here is the Russell futures, and the Russell is trying his best to keep price action above this 50-day moving average. It is, it is fighting hard, folks, it's fighting hard. But as you can see, it too is starting to show that it's struggling for the past couple of weeks. This is the price action on a Russell. See that price action made it back above this 50-day. 
But each week it's been showing I'm lower highs. Lower highs getting lower and lower and lower. So does price action roll over and eventually uh, cause this 50 day moving average to drop below this, two, this 200 day? Because it's very, very little little space in between this 200 day and 50 day on the Russell um, futures. Very little space. And if we get back to 2020, we did eventually see the 50 day cross below the 200 day um, back in 2020, but eventually the Russell took off at the price of action, got back above 50 day and the 200 day, and then we really started to branch higher. Now, I think the Russell will probably give us um, an indication before the other markets do, because again, the 50 day and the 200 day has been the tightest it's been for a while. So since, um, look here, the space in between the 200 day, that was back in October, which was October of uh, last year. And price action bumped up against this 200 day, uh, I mean 50 day and 200 day here. And then we finally broke out above it at the beginning of 2023. But now we're back to that. So does price action hold or is it a fake breakout and we break back down? That's to be determined. I think next between the next two weeks, I think we're going to probably get an answer. So that's something we need to pay close attention to. Now, um, I'm going to draw your attention to the VIX. Then we're going to take a, take a look at a couple more um, time frames and show you what price action did on last week and what we possibly can expect as we go into next week. Let's take a look at the VIX. The VIX also is a compelling story. Now, as you all know, that the markets are normally um, inverse related to the S&P. And I, I just said overall markets. And one thing I highlighted on my previous videos is that this shaded area here has been a strong level of support for the VIX. So with the VIX hitting these strong level of supports on the weekly chart and the S&P and the, um, reg um, the regular markets, the major indices hitting some areas of resistance, which one is going to give? The momentum indicator and the TTM squeeze of the VIX starting to look positive on the weekly chart. That's not good for the markets. Oscillators and on the VIX on the weekly chart have been oversold for quite some time in the full stochastics and in awareness percentage. And the oscillators and the RSI has been bouncing off of oversold territory. So it looks to me like the overall momentum and the VIX, it wants to, it looks like it's ready to change and go higher. So again, I say the next couple of days, next few days or next week or so, we're going to have a decision here eventually because the VIX continues to bounce out of this area of support and bump its head up against the 200-day moving average on a weekly chart. If we get a breakout above this level, start to see the VIX really start to ramp up and break above 23, 23 bucks, folks, we can really start to see the markets decline and the VIX take off. So there's something to pay close attention to over the next couple of days or so. I think we're about to um, see a decision here very, very soon in the near future. So that's what we look like on these weekly charts. You need to pay attention to this because this is um, where, what's been happening over the past several weeks is um, the markets have been very volatile and it's been up and down, up and down. But we are in some type of consolidation pattern and eventually this consolidation pattern is going to give way. All right. Now let's take a look at some short-term action. I'll take a look at a, a four-hour chart. And this is also very interesting. So well, last week we saw the VIX start to really um, start to show its colors, so to say. So again, I told you the VIX has been fighting this shaded area like crazy. So what's, what do we have here? Um, about a week or two ago, we got the VIX went down to as, high, as low as 17.30. A little, little bit of move up, and then we back down to the shaded area. But guess what? Did not drop back to the lowest low. So we creating high lows on the VIX. Nice move up. Still have this level of resistance here. 
that it's playing with and where to back down to its 50 day moving average. So we could see the VIX go a little bit lower, but I'm looking to see if this level of support holds, that's around 18 bucks in the VIX. So the next couple of days, as we start to go into next week, it's a short trading week because Monday is President's Day. So we got Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Either the VIX will try and hold here or if it drops below this level, here are some levels of uh, support right, at, right below 19, just between 18 and 19. If the VIX does not drop back down below, deep into the shaded area, folks, wherever the VIX found support, I'm expecting it to bounce if we do not break below these lows. And it could be a significant bounce. So that's something we need to pay close attention to as we go into next week. So again, in the near term, VIX got up here to this level of resistance and started to pull back with a strong, um, Strong pullback on Friday in the VIX. This is a strong red candle here. So we could see this level even, even get tested and shoot higher from here or break below. And if we do break back below this 50-day moving average on the VIX on this four-hour chart, just start to, start to pay attention to these levels of support down here because if we drop to these levels of support, we could ricochet real quick right back up and um, start to rally on the four-hour chart. Let's look at our VIX. Take a look at the Dow Jones first on our four-hour chart. Show you what price action did on Friday. Again, we had a major drop during the, the, um, the, the uh, throughout the week between Thursday to Friday. Drop back below its 50-day and its 200-day moving average. Oscillators got oversold in the RSI. We got oversold in the full stochastic. Oversold in the wins percentage. Um, Price action starting to rise on lower volume. So that is also a signal that the near-term bulls are probably going to run out of steam a lot sooner. Now, looking at this 180 days, 180 days, 180 day time frame on a four-hour chart, you see the, it really shows you the consolidation patterns. With this level down here been a short, then a strong area of support. Every time we've got down to the level, we've bounced. And what are we doing now? We're bouncing again. But the difference now is that we have dropped back below the 200 day and the 400 and, and the um, 50 day moving average on a four hour chart. And we're starting to rise. This area is going to be a strong area of our resistance, folks. Keep that in mind. We could see price actually continue to rise on Tuesday, Wednesday, maybe back above this level a little bit. Um, but I'll be hard pressed to see price action get back up to this level. Now, what we have here is possibly these lo um, lower highs that is going to be created. When we bounced here, we went up to the um, all the way up to that trend line, pulled back, bounced off of the 50 day, and look, did not last long till we made it back up to this level, created another lower high. Pull back again. So now, do we create another lower high? Do we go higher as this, or do we stop somewhere around, right around like at the circle level? That is to be determined. Um, I think two, Tuesday and Wednesday will be very interesting to see what these markets do. These markets do a fake quick bounce and then pull right back. Um, that's my thought process. We have to wait and see how it, it, it unfolds come Tuesday and Wednesday. S&P shows you the perfect area for a bounce. So you short-term traders um, who um, jumped in here on Friday and um, try to push markets back up. Uh, look, at that, look at that on a weekly chart. I mean, I'm sorry, four-hour chart. That's a perfect bounce off an area of support right off the 200-day moving average. Look at that. Perfect bounce. But now what's going to happen is that this 50 day is probably going to act as an, a level of resistance. We've got to pay close attention to that. We should probably see markets continue to rise as we start the trading week next week. That's my speculation. Until price action get out of the oversold territory on, on RSI, oversold territory on, on the wins percentage and the full stochastics. We can start to see prices rally 
Monday, I mean, Tuesday, maybe Wednesday, back up to this 50 day. They're going to see what happens. Do we break back above this 50 day and start to break out to new highs? Got to wait and see. The mom overall momentum over the past several weeks um, has been indicating that every time we rally, the rallies are getting sh um, shorter and shorter and shorter. So do this, does the same thing happen here? Do we rally up to this 50 day on the four hour and just drop again? We have to see. That is my thinking. The NASDAQ four hour chart is going to look the same way. Again, um, below is 50 day moving average. And still above is 200 day, but just below is 50 day. So price action again, oversold in RSI, oversold in full stochastic, because oversold in the winners percentage. So I do expect to see some type of rally, um, even in the NASDAQ futures. So the question is, how far do we rally? We rally back up here, which is what I really doubt. I doubt if we rally back up that up that far. Now let's we'll see. I think we'll probably rally somewhere around. Somewhere just below this range. That's my speculation. And then we have to see what happens after that. We could start to re get rejected and pull right back down. All right, let's take a look at the Russell. Here's the Russell again. This um, trend line here, Russell has, has been is hard pressed to try to continue to hold its 50 day moving average on its four hour chart. But every time it seems to rally after this pullback, these rallies get short lived. Pull back here. Now, where does where does this rally go? We could see a stronger rally out of the um Russell, but there, there's some strong resistance up here. This trend line is going to be a strong area, a strong level of resistance. So we got to see how far this rally goes in the Russell. But I think eventually it's going to bump its head somewhere in this area. You're going to bump us here somewhere in this area, and then we'll probably see a rejection. Now, if we break out above these levels, then that would be good for the bulls, but I think it's going to be very, very hard to do so with all the news flow that's happening with uh, our economy, geopolitical news, uh, and with the feds continuing to uh, raise rates and have no uh, thought process about reversing their status as far as raising rates to drop um dropping rates so that's what we look like folks um pay very very close attention to what's going on in geopolitical news and pay close attention to some of these areas of support and resistance that i pointed out today because i think they're going to come and play as we continue to consolidate and again pay attention to that vix that vix get a break a nice breakout above between 22 and 23 bucks then we can probably really start to see a new direction in this overall direction of the market. All right, and just for an added bonus, we'll take a look at gold and silver real quick because day two, starting to show a pattern of support. We had a strong pullback in gold since we made that 1975 high. Look at a daily chart in gold. One thing I'll point out is that it's oversold on the daily chart. Oversold, and we're starting to see a change in a shift in momentum in the oscillators and the winds percentage, full stochastics, and the RSI all oversold. It's like on the daily chart, it's like it's ready to bounce from that level. So that's something to be close attention to. Weekly chart looks a little weak, but I think. This level of support at this 50 day moving average could um, prove to be a strong level of support. Got to see how, how that pans out. But in the near term, we could see a possible bounce in gold. And also, look at silver, 
you'll probably, probably see the same thing. So again, silver oversold for sure. Go um look at the with RSI definitely an oversold territory. Full stocks is oversold. Winds percentage oversold. I suspect we'll probably start to see a move up in silver and gold. All right, folks. Until the next video. Hopefully this is something that you guys can use, and I will look forward to catching you guys on the next video. This was pretty long because I wanted to really dive deep into the broader picture and then some short-term action as well. Catch you guys on the next video.